hello, hello everyone. Meldron TV here with another vlog. Well, sitting in the forest, uh, decided to make another vlog today, and it's a perfect day for that. The weather's beautiful I'm in shorts. Spring has sprung in here here in Kansas. Uh, you can see here the birds chirping and everything's starting to grow around. A lot of green. There's flowers, so it's a, it's a beautiful day, and I think it's a great day to talk about something that's been plaguing my mind, not in a bad way, but something I just need to get out and I haven't had the time to do it, but now I do. And what I'd like to talk about is a topic that I think is very important because it can literally uh, ensure the longevity and the health of Classic WoW servers when they launch. And that thing I'd like to talk about is um, our ability to be something of a WoW ambassador to new players returning players and retail players that are going to come on classic servers when they launch so if you're if you live in north america i say it's pretty safe to say that you've been to walmart at least once in your life uh maybe only once because of how walmart is but <laughs> i think everyone's been to walmart what's the first thing you see when you walk into a walmart and for me it's usually that person that's standing there greeting you and it's a walmart greeter right some other companies have tried to copy that, but Walmart was the first one that I've seen mass uh, mass uh, produced, or a, a large company that did something like that. And it's I it's a lesson that I learned from that from that um, Walmart greeter. And I thought to myself, hey, that's something we need to do as veteran uh, or private and private server WoW players, classic WoW players, is to be that greeter or we can call it, we can further extend that to an ambassador. So it's very important for us because remember, servers are gonna be inundated with new players, returning players, and retail players who never played on a private server and, and haven't really experienced Classic WoW at all or in many, many years. So it's very important for us that know the game and uh, have a lot of experience in the game to pass that experience on, that socialization, and kindness to new players. Let me preface this by saying one more thing though. So I think that um, we have an unfortunate air about us as, as uh, the Classic Walk community. We do have some toxic, um, uh, people view us, a lot of people view us as a toxic community. And I don't believe that's true at all. I think that many people um, are very, very good people very and very very good players and do not engage in any kind of toxic behavior however unfortunately you know empty vessels make the most noise empty cans rattle the most and a lot of uh, hate and has been spewed out in forums and on YouTube and that's something we need to quell and that's something that, and the way to do that is to be the best players we can the most helpful social players we can so how how do we do that so when 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 classic servers do launch hopefully soon, there's going to be an influx of players who have never ever experienced WoW Vanilla or haven't experienced it in 10 plus years. And there's going to be a lot of people that are walking around in circles, not knowing where they need to go, not knowing that, that, that they need to train every two levels, not knowing that they need to drag those spells down to their spell bar, not knowing that, you know, they can't... Um, that their hearthstone's an hour cooldown. You know, all these things that we take for granted and we know about, of course, but well, think back to your first days of WoW. You were lost, right? Everyone was kind of lost when it first launched, but if you came in like I did one and a half to two years after WoW's release, you didn't know what the heck was going on. And those and interactions I had during my first week or two literally made my game experience. I would have quit most likely if it wasn't for the people who edge kept edging me on helping me and able to communicate effectively what the wow universe is all about and what the rules are and how things work and out in the outer worlds outside of dungeons outside of outside of major party systems there's a lot of things we can do to help and one of those is is if you see a player running around not knowing where they need to go or they ask you a question that may seem extremely stupid right they may say say to you hey um I can't equip this axe. I don't know why. And they could be a warrior, or they could be, any, and, and and they're coming from retail, thinking, "Oh, I can just equip items, no problem." And you have to tell them, "Hey, listen, you got to train that. You have to go to the weapon trainer and pay money to do that." 
you know, and if you're a high level player and they say, well, how much is it going to cost? And they say, well, it's 10 silver per weapon. And they're going to be like, whoa, I only got like 20 silver on me. You know, you explain like, hey, listen, you don't need all of them right now. Get the ones you need at, at, on a on a day by day basis. When you need this weapon, pick it up, blah, blah, blah. Or flip them a gold, right? One gold will make, ensure a warrior can get all the weapon, weapon training they need. Except for pole arms, but that's later. Uh, they may also say, hey, I don't know where this quest is. I mean, usually, I'm used to like, hey, there's being an exclamation point in my map. I'm like, well, there's no there's no integrated quest helper in Vanilla Guy, yeah, sir or madam. <laughs> so you need to go over here, okay? These are the NPCs you need to kill. These are the NPCs that drop the item you need. If you need any help, let me know. That's another way we can help, right? Uh, how about sick, how about bags, you know? Maybe people might be used to having some larger bags in the beginning. Or have an alt and they just throw them bags right if you got an extra six slot bag just throw it to them you know on mel mage i made a, a, a regular occurrence that when i was leveling and i was and i had my all my six slot bags i would run back to northshire abbey do a yell and say hey open trade with me if you want a six slot bag it helps people a lot and it keeps them it, it introduces them to that wow community that we all know and have that they don't have on retail or may have never experienced a friendly interaction can literally make or break someone's game. It happened to me many, many, many times. Last night, I was running Scarlet Monastery on my Druid, or my, on my Shaman, okay? We had a Warlock in the group. Warrior was on the other continent. Hey guys, can you throw me a summon? So the Warlock runs up to the summoning stone and starts clicking it. And he's like, why isn't this thing working? We're like, dude, you gotta do the summon, you're the Warlock. And he's like, well, how do I do that? So we were like, you know, in your spell, hopefully you've trained this spell, you can, there's a summoning spell. And he's like, well, I don't have any soul shards. So immediately we were like, hey dude, let's kill these, not, let's kill these elites outside Scarlet Monastery, get some soul shards and get this guy over here. Very, very quick, thank us for explaining how it worked. Obviously never played, is probably a very new, new WoW player, probably never played WoW in his life, right? This is his first character ever, or maybe his first warlock. Those are the interactions that are gonna help people out immensely. And if we're able to do that, if we're able to, to, to explain to people, hey, you know, when you want to be that ambassador. When someone comes up to you and says, whispers you or talks to you, say, hey, I need help with this. I don't understand this. Immediately, don't laugh at them. Don't call them a noob. Just say, hey, here you go. This is what you need to do. Any other help you need, whisper me, add me as a friend. Here's a guild invite, you know, things like that. That will ensure, it'll ensure two things. One, that stigma we have of being toxic will be wiped away. Two, it will ensure a very healthy server community. That warrior who gave that one gold to for his for the gear, at some point down the line, you may need a tank for a dungeon, and you whisper that guy back, hey dude, you know, I haven't talked to you in a while, do you want to tank this dungeon for us? Absolutely. The thing you have to realize is retail players coming from retail, they may have the skill to be an excellent tank, but not know a few little things they need to know to get started. So there's a, there's a potential talent bowl here we have this bowl of talent from retail because there are some very good players who play retail that are going to come to classic servers to experience what people everyone's been talking about and raving about for years and that bowl of talent and ingenuity and and uh, a new way of thinking a cultural exchange if you will will be lost if we don't say hey dude here you go here's that one gold or hey here's a weapon trainer Oh, you're level 10? You gotta do your defensive stance quest. Yeah, you can't use charge and defensive stance. I know, that's kind of weird. You're, you're used to that, but you have to switch to, or to battle stance to, do, to, to charge. Those little interactions will ensure that. And, he'll, and, and that person, he or she, will become possibly a very, very good tank. Just needed a little bit of a helping hand. And then we move into the realm of dungeons, okay? So, um, in dungeons, in retail, um, there's a personal loot system. If they just started in Legion, and they've only experienced personal loot, they might not even know how, what Need or Greed means. They might not know the Need or Greed rules. A warrior might be needed on stuff he doesn't really need, and say, hey dude, listen, just to give you a heads up, you, you don't really need that. When you click that Need button, you just stole that cloth piece from the priest. Or you just stole that from, from someone else. Explain that to, if you want to maybe have a chance to vendor it, hit the greed, or you can always pass. And, and that may be an extreme example. Maybe people laugh at that. Who doesn't know how to need and greed? You never know, right? And I think just explaining the rules, the loot rules, you know, may be very helpful. Some guy may run up to a chest and just start opening it. Like, hey, before you open that chest, hold on a second. 
we're all gonna roll on it. That's usually the common way of doing it. Everyone rolls for the chest and whoever wins picks it up. Oh, sorry, I didn't understand that. You know, give them the benefit of the doubt. Are there gonna be toxic people coming from retail? Abs absolutely, okay? And those people, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt, explain things a few times if they still do it, say, hey dude, we're gonna have to remove you from the group if you keep doing stuff like this, you're, you're, you're ninja, ninja looting. And um, so that's very important. Another thing would be tanking, right? So if uh, tanks in retail can pick up aggro immediately if they need to, they have you know abilities where they can just you know shockwave or thunderclap or um, AOE taunt you know very very easily. That doesn't happen in, in vanilla, at least in early game, and definitely in early game. So it's very important to explain, hey hunter, you may want to you may want to turn the taunt off on your pet. Number one, number two. You may want to give that tank two or three Sunder Armors, maybe five to ten seconds before you start engaging full core. And always attack Skull first, X second. Hey, Mage, you want, uh, that moon on that on that guy is telling you to sheep him, you know? Um, these are very, very important things. It's important to have that cultural exchange, give our culture to them, and say, hey, this is what you need to do for this. And maybe they have strategies we haven't heard of. And that... You know, it's probably not true, but we, I mean, everyone really knows the opt optimization of how to do a, a, a certain bosses and groups. But the cultural exchange is very, very important. Um, and I think that being that ambassador, being that you know, mix between a city guard, a Walmart greeter, you know, and, and a help and a helping person, uh, you you will be the ambassador of the classic WoW community. I want to tell you know, you 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 give yourself to this person and say, hey, I know a lot about this game. I've been through it. Yeah, I've died there too. I know how that is. <clears throat> yeah, I know I've been ganked too, but dude, if you need any help, let me know. If you see somebody getting ganked, give them a hand. They may not know how to even PvP, if you're on a PvP server. If you see someone that needs a buff or a heal, they're about to go down, give them that buff or a heal. Very important. Um, because they're coming from a game where there's no social aspect at all. It's basically a single player game for most of it. So engaging them in the social community will ensure that we have a very healthy, healthy server system and that people will enjoy playing and keep coming back. That's the most important thing. I think WoW Classic will be an extreme success, probably regardless of these rules that I'm, or these things that I'm telling you or maybe suggesting. However, however, we want it to be the biggest success as possible. We want to show the retail, we want to show the world, Blizzard, and the MMO community that this is a pure MMO. This is the way things are supposed to be. It's a socialization. It's a game where you socialize with people, you get to know people, you learn together, you have fun together. And then to wait, the way to do that is to be the best ambassador you can be. And there are many, many other examples of how of how this can happen. Um, but I, you know, as I said, as I said a few minutes ago, don't let be, be kind, but don't let people walk all over you either, okay? If someone's, we as, as much as we need to be an ambassador, we also need to, to enforce certain rules. If someone keeps ninja looting, if someone keeps being toxic in chat, if someone keeps using racial slurs, it's just like, you know, hey dude, you might not want to talk about that stuff, or you, you know, um, dude, you're getting kicked out of the group. You ninja looted two pieces of gear. I'm sorry, man, you need to learn a lesson. And remember, we're hoping that these server populations will be low enough that we're, we're able to um, to have repercussions and consequences for your actions if they're bad. If a server caps 2,500 to 5,000, hopefully 2,500, between 2,500 and 5,000, people who are continually doing things that are wrong will reap the consequences, will not get invited to groups, will not be trusted. Um, and will technically be shunned. And that's not a horrible thing to do if that person is doing horrible things, right? So be an ambassador, be that helpful hand, do what you can to make the server community healthy, but, but don't accept unacceptable behavior. And that's something that I think we need to, we need to realize as well. For the retail people who are watching, for the new players that are watching, we want to make this experience for you very, very interesting and awesome and cool. We want you to see why we're so adamant about no changes. We want you to see why we're so adamant about bringing back socialization, no LFG, no LFR. We want to see why we want those things. It's not because we just, you know, we just, it's, we didn't pull it out of thin air. It's essential to the community aspect of the game. 
Uh, so, you know, that being said, um, whether it's out of dungeons or in dungeons, it's very important to be that ambassador. Show people where to go, where the next quest hub is. Show people where the flight master is. You know, maybe flip someone a gold for training once in a while. Say, hey, oh, man, I, I didn't know I needed to save all this gold for all this for all these spells. It's really expensive. I know, man. You know, you're level 10. This gold should keep you going for a while. You know? And I'm not saying just throw people, throw money to people. Because that's not, you don't learn anything that way. But enough gold to get them started. You know, show someone the fish. Uh, and they'll feed themselves for a lifetime. You know, don't don't just feed them fish. You know what I mean? Don't Don't just throw fish at them. Teach them how to fish. Maybe literally, <laughs> maybe show them how to how to fish. But um, yeah, that's it's a very important thing. I've been thinking about this for a long time. Other WoW creators have actually, we've touched upon this. Alex Central actually touched upon it recently. It was a few uh, things back. GP30 touched about it in our in our last interview. Um, but I think I, f I feel like you know putting forth the term WoW ambassador is very important. I think classic WoW ambassador, whatever you want to call it. Or, or, you know, the uh, WoW Greeter. So that's basically what I wanted to, to transfer to you guys today. That's what, It's been sitting in here for a while, and I just needed to get it the hell out. And now it's out, uh, hopefully, effectively, as best I could. Um, I'd like to talk about, um, so do a brief Meldron IRL before, uh, before signing off. And uh, there's two quick things. If you haven't listen to Cla countdown to classic the classic wild podcast i highly suggest it i you, you've all probably heard about it for me it was <laughs> i don't know why but i i was um out of loop for a while and i was uh, on twitter and i followed and i listened to a few episodes and they're great i mean they can, people calling in they have uh interviews they just recently had a uh, vanilla wow uh veteran who did nax on there um and who does who does speed runs very very uh, taught me a lot of things, uh, a lot of things I don't know about endgame rating because I didn't do I didn't do that in vanilla. Uh, I was a noob, and uh, so check out Classic Cast. Um, I'll have links in the description for that. And secondly, I like to talk about a movie that I saw with Def Camp when I was in Philadelphia. Another movie because we, we talked about a Quiet Place last time, but we saw Ready Player One. And let me tell you that the trailer, whoever designed the trailer didn't do a very good job because I didn't want to see that movie. I didn't read the book. I didn't want to see that movie based on the trailer. And my brother was like, hey, we should really go check this movie out. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, it looks stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's like Blizzard, you know, stuff from like Overwatch and stuff, and that could be potentially cool, but I don't know. I don't want to see it. And I'm so glad I did, guys. It was a phenomenal movie. Phenomenal. If you can kind of take James Cameron's avatar, The Matrix, and like Inception kind of, and like meld them together, that's kind of what Ready Player One is. And then all the gaming culture, throw that in there too. Uh, essentially the story is about, um, it's in the future, the world kind of sucks, and everyone plays this VR, kind of like World of Warcraft-y, but like to, to a million, right? So it's like you are your avatar, you go into the game, you experience all these different worlds and places and planets, and I mean, the edge of the imagination is the limit, right? You, anything you can imagine this game probably has. And you're, you're, you, you, everyone goes into this virtual world to escape how crappy the world, the real world is. And they go in there and they have all these interactions and X, Y, and Z. Uh, and not to give too much away, there's, there's, a, there's an antagonist that wants to take over this VR world. The protagonist is, there's actually a few protagonists, but the main character, uh, they have to find this key that the original developer left in the game. Uh, it's an Easter egg, and there's three keys that open up this Easter egg. Whoever finds the Easter egg becomes in control of the VR world. This evil guy wants to get in control of it, but the good guy wants to get it too, and it's a fight to, it's a fight to the end. Um, it's a Steven Spielberg movie, so it's like, and, it, and it's crazy because Steven Spielberg somehow re recreated the magic that he did back in the day. And um, it was a phenomenal movie. And there's, 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 you know, there's, um, O homages to everything you could think of. Blizzard games, The Shining. There's a scene where they actually go to the Overlook Hotel. <laughs> when The Shining's one of my favorite movies, so for that, for me, was like 100 points right there, right? The acting was great. The special effects were incredible. The story was great. You felt good at the end. It was just a well-made movie, um, and I can't give it enough 
uh, credit and props. Very highly recommend that. I'm going to go see The Avengers tonight. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Marvel movies, save Deadpool. Um, and uh, maybe like the Logan movie and stuff like that. I feel like they're very, very similar. But I, I'm going to go in there with the same way I did with Ready Player One. Just kind of open slate and just see how it is. And I'll, I'll let you know how it is probably on next vlog. Um, it's, it's turning into a movie review. <laughs> but anyway, um, guys, thanks so much for all the new subs. If you haven't seen the GP30 interview, definitely check it out. What a great guy. Um, a lot of interesting aspects and, and views about Classic WoW. And he just did an unboxing video on his channel, which is really interesting. We have a new Dev Talk coming out next week with a special guest. If you're interested in doing a Dev Talk, just email us at melderon.gaming at gmail.com. Uh, Super Plate Brothers coming up next, probably the next video we do. And uh, yeah, just guys, don't let the hype di die down. I know people are talking about the hype's dying down because we haven't heard anything from Blizz. There's a fresh show opening up in June light on Light's Hope. And let's keep this train rolling until we hear something from Blizz. And I think we're going to hear something from them very soon. August is BFA launch. So after that, guys, I think that's their next priority. So hopefully we hear something soon. Anyway, guys, it's been great talking to you. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Leave any comments down there. Let me know how other ways we can be WoW ambassadors. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it as well. Well, for now, this is Melderon signing off. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.